Okay, here's the thing about eating right and losing weight. It's all about numbers. It really is. If you can resign yourself to the fact that you're going to have to know some numbers, it's not that grueling of a process. I mean, it's still a grueling process, but it's a more manageable process, and I would like to help you guys with that, even though I obviously have not completed my journey. I'm in the thick of it. So I'm gonna tell you about some things. This video is just a quick introduction to the numbers and science of weight loss. It's going to be a reference point, but it's not going to be going as in-depth as some of the videos in the future will be. If you're not here for fitness things, you're here for beauty things, you can just skip this video right ahead and I will post a beauty video within the next three days or so. First of all, on every nutrition label that you read, there are a million different categories, and there are a lot of different food groups and every different kind of food hits a different point on the pyramid that they introduced. So yes, there are a lot of things to think about when you put something on your plate, but the three most important things to think about are always going to be protein, carbs, and fat. You might remember this from high school health class, but a pound is 3,500 calories. So every time you eat 3,500 calories that you don't burn off or your metabolism doesn't take away, you gain a pound. Every day I eat about 1,200 to 1,300 calories, which is very low for a lot of people, but I have a very slow burning metabolism. If you have a fast burning metabolism or you're a dude, you need to eat more calories. 1500 to 1800 is generally a good starting point. But different bodies do require different things and I don't want to be responsible for you having like a meltdown. So instead of telling you how many calories to eat, I'm just gonna give you a ratio that will work for losing weight no matter how many calories you're consuming. You will always be safe if 40% of your calories come from protein, 30% come from carbs, and 30% come from fat. Interestingly enough, there are four calories for every gram of protein you eat, four calories for every gram of carbohydrates you eat, and nine calories for every gram of fat that you eat. And if I add all of that up, it means that I eat in a range of 120 to 130 grams of protein per day, 90 to 100 grams of carbs per day, and 40 to 45 grams of fat per day. Another cool thing about this ratio is that calories kind of count themselves if you stick to that ratio. You don't have to worry so much about how many calories are in each thing. To me, the hardest part of my day is counting my carbs because I love carbs. I love bread, I love cake, I love pastries, I love all of those things, and that's probably why I am the way I am. But even if I eat my 90 grams of carbs per day and I eat them all in cupcakes, that's not okay. All those cupcake carbs are what we call simple carbs, which means that they break down into sugar or glucose in your bloodstream almost immediately and they turn to fat very, very quickly if you don't burn them off immediately. Complex carbs would be stuff like broccoli and sugar snap peas and grapes and those kind of things with good sugars and that stuff. Also, good thing about carbs, you can subtract dietary fiber. So like I have a can of beans in front of me and it will say um, that it has 23 total carbohydrates, but six dietary fiber. You can subtract the six from the 23 because dietary fiber carbohydrates never actually enter your bloodstream. So that's cool. Whenever you're just dying for some carbs, and there will be a day that you're just dying for some carbs, please uh, eat your snack and eat some protein with it. But protein is good to eat with carbs for several reasons. The most important of which is that the protein will slow the absorption of the carbohydrates into your bloodstream. It means that you have a lot longer to burn off the carbs, and it also means that a lot fewer of the carbs will turn into sugar and turn into fat. In fact, that's just a good general rule. Every time you eat anything, make sure that it's balanced. Another kind of shitty thing about uh, what you know is protein, um, these beans, while they do have, I think, nine grams, seven grams of protein for every half cup, they also have 23 grams of carbohydrates. So while we're told that beans are a protein, they're actually pretty, uh, like, 60, 40, I guess, for carbs and protein. So you need to be aware of that when you're eating things. If you have an off day and you have a few too many cupcake carbs, that's okay. More than likely, that cupcake wasn't 2,000 calories. You didn't even gain a pound. You haven't ruined your life. And most importantly, you haven't ruined your diet. Don't like eat a cupcake on Thursday and then say, well, I'll just start again Monday because you can very feasibly gain three pounds in the time that you're binging to get ready for the diet starting again. As soon as you swallow the cupcake carbs, you're back on the bandwagon. Otherwise, it's just a very vicious cycle for people to fall into, which is a cycle I fell into for 19 years of my life. This routine is gonna be really drastic for some people and this is not the end all be all of eating. This is just what works for me and these are just the numbers that I know and want to share. Every time I eat something, I take out a notebook, I write down how many calories, how many carbs, how many protein, and how many fat grams it has. At the end of the day, I kind of appraise how I've done. Just figure out what works for you and if you have any tips, then please leave them in the comments because God knows I'm always looking for tips and I'm sure that everybody else who's watching this is as well. And uh, thank you. Don't forget to be awesome, and I will see you all. No, that's my sign off from my regular channel. Bye. Yep. The next video will be more fun and less like these are the numbers of death.